Unlocking Field Pulse's service levels, exploring projects, jobs, side business, subtasks, and a feature breakdown. Hey there, I'm Saxon Wan, and welcome back to Want the Facts. Today, we're going to dive into the structure of Field Pulse and how it works for professionals like yourselves. Field Pulse serves various industries, each with unique work structures. Today, I'm going to show you how you can efficiently manage your work regardless of your industry using our project, job, and site visit levels. So we're going to start off at our project level. At the highest level, we have projects. Think of projects as the long-term endeavors. Whether they can span weeks or months or even years, these could be massive undertakings like building a whole new facility or rewiring an entire building for electrical upgrades. When you create a project, it's going to be under work. You'll see the project tab just here, and you're going to go ahead and create a project. You'll be able to assign a customer here. Let's say it's Billy. You can give a project name and a description as well. You're going to be able to select a customer's specific location. So if you are using our multi-location feature, you're going to be able to click into this field. You're going to see your customer's multiple locations and you can search and select which one you want this project to be assigned to. You have a start date and end date, or if you want to click in, you can clear these as well if the actual time period is still uncertain. You can adjust the status. So we have the opportunity, an accepted project, planning in progress, pending, completed, cancelled. So perhaps this one is uh, in our planning stage. We do have a completion a percentage, which you can manually drag, which will be automated in the future. We have notes, so you can add in any notes here for your project, any job notes as well. So these are going to paste into any jobs you create within this project. And I'll explain that um, in a little bit. So we could say, Access via back gate code is, for example. Moving down, you have your team members, which you want to actually assign to this job. So you can select a team. So perhaps we want the Saturday team and the default team to be assigned to this project. You then will have all of your project custom fields, which you can set up in your company settings under projects, custom fields. So you're going to save this project and you're going to be able to see all of those details I put in, plus all of the tabs at the top. So we have jobs, as you can see, jobs falls within a project. That takes me over to our next level, which is our jobs level. Underneath projects, within projects, we have jobs, but jobs can be a part of a project or standalone as well. They're more detailed. They can span from just a few hours to days, weeks, or even months. For example, in a plumbing, a job might be fixing a leak in a client's home, while in electrical, uh, it could be installing a new lighting system. Within a project, I'm going to now create a job. Like I mentioned, you can create a job by itself outside of a project. You can see we have a handy create job button right here. We can click in to that and we can either just import a template if you have these set up or fill out the job manually. So we can see it's going to pre-fill the customer here, the project, the job title, which you can always adjust, the location as well, and the contact, which you can adjust as well. So all of the customer contacts will show up here for the location or you'll have all uh, customer contacts as well if you are using our multiple contact feature. Scrolling down, you'll have your job date. So you can set up the start date, the end date, and the time as well, and assign your team members here. So perhaps we want to have this from the 7th to the 14th, and we're going to have this um, job. New lighting install for house one, for example. And for this job, we want to assign everyone who is going to be across it. So perhaps it's the default team. We want to select all just here. Fill out the rest of your job details. So we have tags, custom fields. You can assign assets as well to this job. Fill out your notes. And as you can see, the service notes from the project carried across into this job. And we have field notes and files. So we'll go ahead and save this job. We have the job and the project is going to be linked just there. We have project test, 
Clicking back into the project record, I can go under the jobs tab and we can see jobs. We have projects and jobs now. Moving on to our next level, which is going to be site visits. Site visits are essentially sub components of a job. They can be scheduled daily or as needed. When you're going to visit a job site, this feature is handy for organizing your team and ensuring everyone knows where they need to be. For instance, you might have one team member on this job Thursday afternoon and then another user working on it Friday midday. Then you might even have a callback on this job a few weeks later. So you wouldn't want to create a whole new job, rather you would just create a new site visit to record this. I'm going to go into the project record. We then have the job and I can click into this job and I can create a new site visit. So I can go edit. Scrolling down, we have add site visit there. So I can click on this give a site visit a status, which the assigned team members will be able to update. We can give this a title. So perhaps this is going to be a stage one of house one lighting install. You then have your team members. So perhaps not the whole default team, but this is just going to be Caleb and Gabriel, and you're going to be able to select. So perhaps this is going to be on the eighth from 8 a.m. through 5 p.m., for example. So the site visit is status, title, team member, and the time and date. So I can go up and save. So we can now see we have a project, we have a job. Within that job, we now have a additional site visit, which you can see here, site visit one. I wanted to touch on subtasks. So this is completely separate from a project, job, and site visit. It is a different feature which is found within a job record. Subtasks are like a checklist within your job record. They allow you to list important or required tasks that need to be completed within a job. Each task can be assigned to a specific team member, making it easy to track the progress and ensure nothing gets missed. Let's say we were on our new lighting install for house one and we wanna have a list of checkpoints that need to be marked off to get this completed. What we wanna do is navigate over to the subtask tab from here, I can actually create a brand new subtask list or I can create a new series and I can insert a template. So just for this example, let's say we have job tasks. This is the template, work performed, what materials have you used? And you can see we have a title, we have a description, we have the team members. So perhaps we want to assign this to Gabe and the next one, we want to assign it to Dominic. We can also toggle it on so it is a required field, which means technicians will not be able to update the job status to completed until all of the required subtasks have been completed as well. So I'm going to go ahead and submit. And as you can see, Within a job record, under the subtask tab, we have our two subtasks here that are assigned to the team members. So whether you're managing a massive electrical project, a plumbing repair job, or a series of site visits, Fieldbolt has you covered with its structure and features. Stay organized, efficient, and on top of your game with Fieldbox. If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel for more Field Pulse tips and tricks. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. And if you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to connect with us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, or right here on YouTube. Leave your questions in the comments and we'll be more than happy to help you out. Thanks for tuning in and until next time, I'm Saxon and now you've got the facts. See ya.